Hello friends, hope you guys are having an amazing day so far. If you're part of the family, welcome back. If you're new here, thank you so much for stopping by and checking me out. Um, we are gonna jump right into our study. We are going through the Gospel Centered Life book. Um, and we started lesson six a few days ago. Um, we started talking about heart idolatry. And we talked about how our sins, our surface sins, are only symptoms of a deeper problem, all right? That underneath every external sin, it's a sin underneath, our sin, uh, what do I call it? A sin beneath the sin. Um, and it's actually sin of the heart because we have idols in our hearts that we have uh, replaced God with. Um, so we need to repent of those first if we want to see the fruit um, yeah, in our lives and for people to see it uh, externally. So we talked about, for example, the sin of gossip and we looked at the idols in our heart that could be leading us to gossip. So we talked about the idol of approval, the idol of control, the idol of success, the idol of pl pleasure, the idol of recognition, the idol of respect and how those are the sins that we need to repent of uh, because that is what is causing us to gossip okay um so let's continue on all these idols are false saviors promoting false gospels every one of these things approval control reputation success security pleasure knowledge recognition respect is something we already have in jesus because of the gospel so it's not it's not bad to want these but we already have them in christ okay but when we are not living in light of the gospel we turn to these idols to give us what only jesus can truly give us another way to identify your particular heart idol is to ask what do i love what do i trust what do i fear okay it's a good exercise for example if i fear being single being in a relationship will probably be my idol because it promises to deliver me from the hell of singleness. If I trust having enough, security will probably be my idol because it promises that I'll never be without anything. If I love order and structure, I laugh because I feel like that's one of my idols. Like in my house, I'm like, okay, kids, pick up after yourselves. Like I lose sleep because my house is a mess before I, go in, before I went to bed because the cushions are not where they should be. All right, I'll stop. <laughs> so for example, if you love order and structure like me, control will probably be your idol because if I'm in charge, I, make, I can make sure things are in order. This is like a mirror for myself, guys. Reflecting on the sin beneath our sin shows why the gospel is essential for a true heart change. The gospel is the only thing that can change our hearts. Remember, when we come to Christ, we came from darkness to light, right? We are saved in our hearts and our spirits. Well, that's where the work needs to happen when it comes to us return, um, uh, how do you say, uh, repenting from our sins. Repent from the sin beneath the sin. The sin that we see is secondary to what is going, to, going on inside of our hearts, okay? It's possible to repent of surface sins for a lifetime, yet never address the deeper heart issues behind them. That's where we're gonna find real deliverance, all right? Real rescue from these sins. At the moment I sin, I have already broken the first commandment. An idol has taken God's place in my soul. I am trusting in that idol rather than in God to be my savior. I need to apply the gospel by one, repenting of my deep heart idolatry and our unbelief, okay? Um, and two, that's two, believing. <laughs> believing that is turning my mind toward the specific gospel promises that break the power of my characteristic idols. So number one, repenting. Remember we talked about false repenting, true, repenting, uh, true repentance um, in chapter five, okay? So again, repenting of the deep heart idolatry, not just saying, oh God, I'm sorry that I gossiped again. Why am I gossiping, okay? and. What is the, the sin beneath that? What is my idol, my idol that I am bowing down to and that is why it's causing me to sin? And then again, believing. That is turning my mind toward the specific gospel promises that break the power of my characteristic idols. So I share with you guys that one of my idols um, is being in charge, order and structure. Because I feel like if I'm in control, things are gonna go the way that I have set up for it to be. I'm gonna be success, you know, successful, and that's where you know I have my comfort. If I'm in charge, things will be the way that I want them to. And for me, it's learning to say, let go. 
let go um, and trust the Lord. He is in control, okay? Not me. Um, according to Dr. Steve Childers, that's a, Steve Childers, yes. Yeah. So according to Dr. Steve uh, Childers, faith involves learning how to set the affections of our mind and heart on Christ. Affections. Faith requires a continual rehearsing and delighting in the many privileges that are now ours in Christ. So disciplining myself to, to understand um, or to remind myself to love God. Direct my emotions into, I'm going to trust, I'm going to love God. He's worthy of my love. He's worthy of my trust. He will be my idol, okay? Notice the two aspects of faith setting our affections on Christ and delighting in the privileges that that um, our that are ours in Christ. I must worship Jesus, not my idols. And I must remind myself of what is really true about me because of Jesus. And a huge part of this is being in scripture. If I am in scripture, right? The Bible says if I know God, and know how do I know God? getting to know him through his word, which is the Bible. If I go deep into these truths about who God is, who Jesus is, who he has revealed himself to be in his ministry here, um, because right, Jesus is God. He says, I am the image of the invisible God. If you see me, you've seen God. So in us, the Bible says, if we know God, we will love him. So if the goal is to desire him, to fall in love with him, we gotta know him, right? So be in the word every day. And that way, knowing these truths about God, these facts that come straight from him, man, we are going to desire him more, all right? Um, let's go back again to our example of gossip, okay? Anybody out there getting convicted, anybody? I'm not saying I don't, I mean, how do I say this? This is specific for somebody, it's hitting home for somebody, okay? Not that I don't, I'm not saying, oh, I don't gossip, this is not, I think it is a struggle for me. Um, but for me, it's more of structure that I was telling you guys, being in control. Maybe, maybe, maybe there's somebody out there who this, this is um, their, uh, they're getting convicted right now, okay? <laughs> Let's go back again to our example of gossip. Let's imagine that I have identified respect as a dominant idol that thrives uh, me, that, that drives me to gossip. So I want people to respect me. I want people to see me as respectful. So for that reason, if I have to gossip about this person so they can look down on that person and up on me, um, then I'm gonna do it. That's what gossip is, is putting somebody down, or sorry, slander, or slandering someone, um, is making me look better, in a better light than they are, okay? After I acknowledge my sin and repent of it, I ex exercise faith in two ways. First, I pause and I worship Jesus because he laid aside his right to be respected, right? Um, looking at Jesus and looking what he did here on earth, he wasn't going around and saying, you gotta respect me, you gotta respect me. He could have very well done that because he, if anyone in this world needs to be respected, should be, um, is him. But he laid aside that right for us, okay? Um, all right, uh, becoming humble, so Jesus becoming humble to the point of death. I mean, that's like the, to the extreme that he did, okay? And we see that in Philippians 2, 5 to 11. Second, I remind myself of the gospel truth that I no longer need to crave the respect of others because I have the approval of God through faith in Jesus, okay? God's grace has freed me from demanding my own respect and now I live for the fame and the honor of Jesus, okay? So that's just taking an example of gossip and seeing that the heart idolatry there is respect. And like Jesus, we don't demand respect, we humble ourselves, right? Why? Because Jesus did it and also because we know that we are loved by Christ and that should be enough for us, okay? This exercise is fairly simple in the abstract, but it can be much more difficult when thinking through your own personal patterns of sin, all right? So for me, it's homework for me to go ahead and do that through um, with the, the idol, the heart idol that I shared with you guys, okay? So set aside some intentional time to, number one, identify your common surface sins. Two, prayerfully consider what heart idols might lie behind them. Three, worship Jesus for his victory over that idol. And four, find a specific gospel promise you can rely on to help defeat the power of that idol. 
Be sure to invite others into your process of reflection and repentance. As one writer has put it, you can't see your own face. We need each other in order to see our sin clearly and deal with it honestly. I need the church. I need those around me to help me see those sins. So if it means me talking to my husband, to my kids, to my friends that are close by to me and saying, hey, what sins do you see in my life that I need to work on? Um, that's, that's gold right there, man. We need to see the value in that because when we do that is when we can grow. We can grow spiritually. We can mature um, as Christians. As you learn to live a gospel-centered life, remember that this is the essence of walking with Jesus. Repentance and faith are not steps on a path. They are the path. <laughs> Let me read that again. Repentance and faith are not steps on the path. They are the path. The work of God is to believe. Okay? All right, guys. That was an amazing chapter. Yeah, guys. So go ahead and comment below if you guys do want to take on this challenge and if you guys want me to pray for you in doing so. Um, because this is where major work can happen in your heart, in those secondary sins, in those primary heart idolatry sins that we have. So, all right. That's about it, guys. Um, stay tuned for a few messages for myself. Love you all, and I'll see you in my next video, Lord willing. Bye. Hello friends, thank you so much for taking the time to watch my videos. It really does mean the world to me that you guys take the time to watch his videos. I really appreciate it, so thank you, thank you very much. I have a few messages to share with you guys. They are not long at all, I promise. So number one, I accept prayer requests. Um, me and my family have a list that we pray for every single day. So if you want us to add you and your prayer requests to our list, just go ahead and message me. Either leave a comment below or contact me through any of the social uh, media platforms that I have and we will go ahead and add you to our prayer list. Number two, if you are on Instagram, you should totally be following me. Why? Because I post a lot more content there than I do here, obviously, on YouTube. I post pictures of my kids, recipes, and such. So if you are on there, go ahead and follow me. And number three, if you are not already part of this family, go ahead and subscribe to this channel. You can hit the subscription button below and the notification bell so that you can get notified every time I upload a new video. We have so much fun here in this channel. I share with you guys recipes, I do Bible studies, I do makeup reviews, I do vlogs, I do videos with my kids. So if you wanna go ahead and join our family, like I said, go ahead and subscribe. All right guys, that's about it. Have an amazing day and I will see you in my next video. Bye.